words. If you listen attentively to the first reading of this Mass, you will notice the problem that happened in the early church. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verses 1 through verse 3, when the church gathered to pray, the Lord demanded of the apostles at that point, or the early church at that point, to set Paul and Barnabas aside for the mission they had for them, precisely the mission of the Gentile. And called on God's works. When Paul was commanded in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, when the Lord said that he would show him how much he would have to suffer for him when he had that he would use him to be the apostle of the Gentiles. And so in fulfillment of this promise of God, of this word of God, he made that demand. And they were set aside, prayed over at the church, and then sent forth for the mission. And so on that Gentile mission, they went to places. One of those places where they went was Antioch in Pisidia. And then they went to Lystra, they went to Dele, and all other places where they evangelized. And the central message of Paul and Barnabas was that faith in Christ Jesus brings about your salvation. Not necessarily the observance of the law of Moses, precisely circumcision of the flesh. Granted that circumcision was a foundation for the covenant of God with Abraham. But then the salvation brought by Jesus place before us a higher ground. That ground is a ground of faith. And that's why in the testimony of Paul in his letter to the Galatians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, he said, it is not the law that saves us, but faith in Christ Jesus that brings about our salvation. But when Paul and Barnabas went on evangelizing and teaching this message, some products from the church in Judea came to Antioch with a different message. And what was the message? That they Gentiles must be circumcised in order to be able to become believers and to be saved. And as Paul stood up, together with Barabbas to defend the doctrine that they had taught the people. And he insisted that that must not be. That brought a lot of arguments. And so there were divisions of the church, the early church, that needed to be addressed. Again, these men who had come from Judea with this doctrine of this teaching, somewhat we are bereaved of the knowledge of Scripture. For the Lord has said in Genesis chapter 12 when he had called Abraham out. He said, through you I will bless nations. Meaning that the law of salvation was open to everybody who believed in Christ Jesus. And that's why again on the day of Pentecost in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 when Paul, when Peter preached the message of the resurrection, the people, we are told, we are caught to their hearts and they stopped to the disciples and they said, what shall we do in order to be saved? And they said, they said to them, accept or express your faith in the person of Jesus. And then, in the book of the prophets, Amos chapter 9, verses 10 and 11, the Lord again, when he was speaking about the destruction of the land following from the seeds of the people of Israel, had also made a promise. He said, There, the sinners among the people will be killed in war. All those who say, God will not let any harm come near us, they are going to be killed. The Lord says, A day is coming when I will restore the kingdom of David, which is like a house falling into ruins. I will repair its works and restore it. I will rebuild it and make it as it was long ago. And then he went for that to say, the people of Israel will conquer what is left of the land of Edom. And all the nations.
revelation that we are what mine, says the Lord, who will who will cause this to happen? Other nations we are included in the restoration of God, which is to be brought about by the salvation of Jesus. And so the teaching of this man runs contrary to the message of salvation that God has brought to the people. And so to resolve this conflict, there was a need for higher intervention of the leaders of the church. And then they sent delegates to Jerusalem. There, James presided over the council that was sat by the disciples and the elders of the church. And then I put forth to you three principles of conflict resolution. One is desensitization. The second one is deliberation. And the third one is decision. And this is what the church at that point in time applied in resolving this conflict. And what do you what do you mean by desensitization? Now every party to the conflict is given an opportunity to express itself or himself or herself. The opposing party we are given opportunity to bear their minds about what they think. And then those who held on to the teaching of Paul and Barnabas also we are given opportunity to air their views. And when they did that, then the church or the elders sat and deliberated over this matter. And when they had finished their deliberation, they then discovered the force and the truth about the matter. And then they made their decision. And their decision is what we make today. And also, a lot of scholars have also come up to say that their decision was within the precepts or within the circumference of what, has, what is known as the Noahite laws given by God. And these Noahite laws, you will find it in the book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 4, where the Lord had demanded that Noah and his descendants will not eat the meat of strangled animals. That every meat that must be eaten, the blood must be removed. And again, that idol worship must be abhorred. And that the people will not curse God. And also, sexual immorality must be avoided. And then he also went further to say that, that they must also avoid stealing. And then they will establish the court of justice. Just like uh, the church is doing at this point in time, the courts that eventually will look into matters and take decisions and then come forth with solutions that will resolve the problems. This was what was raised to them by James because James had to put that part of the prophecy, prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 10 to 11 that it establishes these laws. And with that, they sent Paul and Barnabas back to the church with silence accompanying them to authenticate the word they had written down about the demands that the Gentiles would follow in their worship of God and also in attending to the faith of the church. And with that, the peace, peace was restored to the church. Dear friends, when we look around us today, what do we find? Do we find peace in our church? Do we have a situation where there is arguments and quarrels, misunderstanding? What about the world? What about our society? Today we are aware of what is happening in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine. The war is still raging. Lasting peace has not been enacted yet. And so people are killed, properties are lost. Lives are lost, resources are lost, businesses are closed down because of lack of peace in that region of the world. And the world economy is being affected by this strange relationship between these two countries. And then international relations are strained as a result of it. And then there is infighting and political at the world level that is affecting every corner of the globe. What about home, back home? What about our families? Do we have peace? Don't we have situations of this kind of conflict? 
We hear of domestic violence here and there. It's a product of lack of peace in the home. What about between brother and brother, sister and sister, children and father and all that? Do we find situations like that? Today we celebrate the fathers. And yeah, salute. Praise the Lord. Today is the day of the men. Am I right? Where are the men? Yeah, where are the men? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Some people are are revolting voices of CMO who refuse to wear the museum who are there. Today so is supposed to be the death of the man. Am I right? Huh? So why are you protesting? Like the engineer men. Praise the Lord. Men stay. Where are the women? Huh? Is it not the way? They are silent. And the day of the women, the men will do what? Follow and support. So where are the women? On our day? I know you are my boss. Are you there? Okay, God bless you, sir. Amen. But what am I like that? Conflicts. In the home, in the society, in the church. Some parishes, father and parishioners, fighting. Some places, fire and fire, youth, faction in the youth, they fight. Amen. That is church conflicts. Some of we have doctrinal war conflicts. Those who are in the church but they don't believe in the doctrine of war, maybe. They don't pray the rosary, they can do every other thing, but when it comes to rosary, they will do all, they will sneak away. Those who don't have belief in the conclusion of the prayer, through Christ our Lord, it must be in Jesus' words, name. If you don't say it in Jesus' name, they will not do what? Pray. If they have to pray, they will say in Jesus' name. Even Catholics. Doctrinal conflicts. They happen in the early church. And so how do we resolve this? In the, this year, the Pope came up with the Synod of Synodalities. We are opportunities given to the church world over to discuss those conflicting areas of the church's life so that we can find a common ground from every part of the world. Submit whatever you think the church should look into in order to resolve certain issues that are bringing the church and bringing the glory of the church down such that there is no one voice speaking. And so you find conflict at every level of the society's life, both in church and secular. Then friends, in order for us to resolve things, like some of you parents, sometimes when you go out and come back by the long time you return to the house, your children are fighting or they have fought, and one person said it's broken. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Did I speak your mind? Did I say the truth? And so when you return at that point and see that a child's head has been put in, what will be your first reaction? Some of you is spontaneous reaction is that you pick it and throw the person who broke the head. Is it not so? You are not okay. That's how you do it. But it's not a proper approach. Try to desensitize the children. Call this person, call this person, what happened? Why did you have to break your mother's neck? And then, by the time you finish listening to each and every one of them, you will be able to cancel them, so that such will not repeat itself. But if you begin by beating that one who broke, broke the head, whether he was wrong or right, he did not do what, handle the matter well. And next time it cannot come. When they have earned their minds, you listen, you deliberate, and you decide to cancel. Dear friends, in our country, Nigeria, today, there are a lot of conflicts. A lot of conflicts. I don't know those who are from Anambra here. Those who are from Anambra. The news this morning is a watch with a lawmaker from Charles Rudolph's home constituency, the governor of Anambra State, who was called kidnapped some days back, beheaded. 
and this money they brought his head as um, Chisco's back, they damaged those of you from that area and dropped it there. He was here, probably some of you might know the person. Representing that, that is conflict in our lands. What about the Odutua Republic agitation? What about the Biafra agitation? Why these agitations? Why are they on? What about the Asus tribe that has been raiding the nation? All the universities in Nigeria closed down. All government universities, sponsored universities closed down. Except private universities that are there. Look at the number and millions and millions of our youth that are on the street at home eating free food, getting involved in cyber crime, getting involved in armed robbery because they are not busy. And there is conflict in every structure of the God of the lands. Because there's no peace. And that creates tension everywhere. How do we resolve all this? The church has given us the model. And what is that model? Dialogue. Deliberations. But those who are at the head of affairs at the Abraham Lincoln of the United States of America will say, in moments of conflict, state all your case before your opponent, such that there will be no debates. Because when he debates or when she debates, he or she will have no point to debate because he has made their points clear. And that is the principle of desensitization. The Nigerian state is failing. It's at a point of collapse and everybody is crying. Dear friends, in the world we have the, if you like, call it the watchdog or the watchtower, the United Nations which is the umbrella organization that guides nations of the world. This body was established in 1946 with 193 states or nations as members. And in order to help it in gathering and fostering peace, justice, equality in the world, it created councils, the General Assembly Council, the Security Council, it has the Economic and Social Council, the Throughship Council, and then it also has the International Court of Justice Council. Then it has the Secretariat, manned by the General, Council, by the General Secretary of the United Nations. And each of these councils has a responsibility. Ever since the establishment of the United Nations in 1946, it has faced 250 wars in the world. And also currently, from its analysis of conflicts in the world, it has also established that, uh, that 600 million children are affected by wars in different parts of the world that it goes on trying to see how it resolves these problems. The United Nations also has come up with the Sustainable Development Goals. It had the goals and then came up later with the Sustainable Development Goals, about 18, 17 or 18 of them. But I want to be particular about one of them, precisely number 16, that talks of justice, peace, and strong institutions. And in his charter for the year 2022-2250, he says that is about 228 years ahead of all of us here, but then all of us should have died. And he says in that charter that the youth are the focus of that charter to sustain peace, justice, and establishment of strong institutions. And one of those is strong institutions that it talks about is the university. And it says that the university is a strong actor in bringing about justice, peace, because it educates the children, it educates the young boy and the youth, it empowers them with knowledge, building human capacity and capital, human capital development in order to 
puts to the world men who will become leaders of tomorrow and champions of peace and justice. But where is our university today? Close down. Our universities are supposed to be citadels of knowledge, but it is closed down. And a man without knowledge is as good as dead. What is the attitude of our government to peace? The attitude of our government is that they have paid deaf ear to the cries of the cheating population of our young people that are wasting at home without knowledge. That they do not want to sit down to deliberate and discuss these matters of conflicts. Nigerian states, with these so called leaders, do not want to sit down and say, What is the way forward? The apostles did it. They sat down together to discuss. They do not want to discuss the Odudua agitation. They do not want to discuss the IPOB or Biafra World agitation. In the Gazette of the United Nations, there is no current agitation of Biafra that is there. You don't find it because they do not want to address this issue that is bringing about conflict in Nigeria where people are killed. Houses are destroyed. Institutions are destroyed on daily basis. They do not want to stop discuss it. But my dear friends, Nigerian state, in fact, the parliament of Nigeria was quick to stand up to invite Ahmed Zainab, the Minister of Finance, when seven point something million was missing in the uh, uh, automobile account, they invited her with the account general of the nation to explain the whereabouts of the money. And then, of recent, you heard that the accountant general of the federation is on what suspension without pay, Ahmed Idris. But their friends, how much did Ahmed Idris steal? Eighty billion. Eighty billion. Eighty what? Billion. billion. Are you shouting? Small money. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When ASU started its strike, precisely 2009, when they started from 2009 that ASU began to dialogue with Nigeria, with the Nigerian states, Amen. 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 From 2009 to date, ASU has gone on strike eight times plus the current one. Now within this period, ASU is asking the federal government in the discussion they had in 2009, following from that again, they had another discussion with them in 2013, where they entered a memorandum of understanding, and then in 2013, a memorandum of action. The federal government pledged and promised to spend on education 1.3 trillion naira because as you accuse the federal government that the institutions are in deplorable state and they cannot continue that way and so the government came that this 1.3 trillion naira is going to be paid in trenches of 220 billion and then in the year 2013 the federal government paid 200 billion and then thereafter they failed to pay and then in 2013 they came up and paid just 20 billion and then, then again they came up and paid 25 billion in 2017 and also rejected it and said that is not our agreement if you have to pay anything less then you pay 110 billion which is 50% of 220 billion and the government to refuse. But the government is quick to pay 4 trillion for fuel subsidy. The government is yet ready and willing to pay 222 28 billion for feeding fictitious school children and the defended orders. Yet, the, ed the ed educational institutions, the universities owned by the state that is supposed to be the bedrock of civilization, development, peace, justice in the land is being neglected. 
And that's the conflict. The Nigerian state is not willing to sit down and dialogue with Biafra and say, what do we do? What is the way forward? But they want to clamp down on it. Today, in the, by the end of this week or sometime next week, many of the parties will go for their primaries. And what is ringing in the air? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the words, wind. And what is that answer blowing in the wind? Everybody says, following from the United Nations Charter for Justice, every region should test the presidency. Did I say the truth? Huh? Every region should test the word presidency in Nigeria. And as it stands by the history and record of Nigeria, the region that has not tested the presidency of Nigeria is where? I did not hear. South? South? I speak as a priest. Southeast. But nobody wants the Southeast to pursue the president of Nigeria. The South South want to present candidates. I am a South South man. But we do not stand on justice. Fanika Yode says, if the South East is not giving the presidency of Nigeria, South South and South West are not just to them. Otherwise, it should go to the North. I do not subscribe to that. It should go to the South East, whether every other region or not agrees. Let the government come to a round table. That is the only way that the conflicts in Nigeria can be abated to a level of understanding. All men are created equal. Every one of us values justice. If we do not value justice, then we are good to be disbanded as a people. And that's why the early church had to go out, all out, to seek for peace. Justice breeds peace. Conflict breeds war. That is why millions of children today are suffering. My dear friends, as we as a church take a cue from what the early church has done, likewise the civil state should take a cue from that. That is the only way that justice will prevail and peace will abound among us. In the past, in the scriptures, precisely in the book of Joshua chapter 24, verse 24, Joshua called the host of Israel and gathered them together and said, we have to sue for peace. No more division about this God or that God. Me and my family, I will worship the living God. And the people say, we shall worship the living God. And there was peace in Israel. In First Kings chapter 17, chapter 18 and 19, the contest between Ahab and the prophet Elijah was resolved through dialogue. The conflict, because the prophet had said there will be no rain in the land for three and a half years until I do what? I say so. And for three and a half years, there was no rain. Everybody was in trouble. The prophet who made the prophecy was in trouble because he was on the run, because his life was at stake. The king kept chasing him until he said, hold it there. He showed himself and said, let's dialogue. Through the dialogue, what happened? The prophets of Baal, they are giving opportunity and this sensitized. They are giving opportunity. Prove your words. And I prove my words. And at the end, who won? God won. Peace was restored to the light. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, when the great young women complained of being marginalized, and the church gathered together and said, we elect seven deacons who will serve at table. What happened? There was peace in the church. Nobody complained of being cheated or marginalized. Their friends, Today, we read from us of the Apostles again, chapter 15, of another incident of this kind of incident. We can only achieve peace, as Jesus has promised us, when we come to a round table. And I will speak today as a priest of God. The Nigerian state, if we want peace in the coming election, should allow justice and equality to prevail. Let the uh, presidential position be allotted to the people of South East. Peace be with you.